Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about ACS skills assessment and I'll also try to address some of the confusions you may have before applying for skills assessment. The topics that I'm going to cover in this video are finding and assessing authority for your degree, choosing your nominated occupation or closely related occupation and applying for skills assessment. First of all, let me tell you that if you studied IT or IS or ICT related subjects and you are looking to migrate to Australia, you will need to get your degree assessed by Australian Computer Society. So the assessing authority for these courses is ACS. If you have any confusion about the assessing authority, just go to this website. You can find the link in the description below. Just open this website, scroll down, type your nominated occupation and then search. Here you will see the assessing authority for your nominated occupation. Well, at this stage, you may be wondering what your nominated occupation is. If that is the case, follow my suggestions and you will most likely discover your nominated occupation related to your degree. Many people would either suggest you to consult a migration agent or email ACS directly. But unfortunately, most of the migration agents do not have a proper knowledge about information technology or information systems degree. Therefore, most of the migration agents are unable to suggest you exactly related nominated occupation for your degree. You may also choose to email ACS directly. But unfortunately, what I have experienced in the past is that they don't give away any information unless you have paid the fees and submitted all the documents. So I followed these steps to find my nominated occupation. Well, the best place to find the information about nominated occupation is the website of your university. Just go to the website of the university that you studied in and go to the page on which it describes or it lists the course you studied. In my case, I studied Master of Management Information Systems in Edith Cowan University. So I am visiting this page. If I scroll down on this page and go to the career opportunities section, I can clearly see that systems analyst, IT manager, program manager, project manager, business systems analyst and business process analysts are the possible future job titles after passing this course. Similarly, if you studied master of information systems and technology from Curtin University, just go to the website of Curtin University and find the page which describes the course. Read sections such as specialization or what you will learn or outcome of the course. You may also find the information in the course handbook if your university has published one. If you are unable to find the exact information on the website, I suggest you to contact the career center or similar departments at your university. Apart from these steps, asking friends and seniors is always a good idea. Now that you have got some idea about possible nominated occupations and relevant occupations, go to the website of ACS, click on migration skills assessment and then go to information for applicants page. Scroll down and find skills assessment information section. Click on NGESCO code, 
which will download a document for you containing full information on all the occupations for skills assessment with Angesco code. Try to match occupation titles and job duties with what was written on the course page or course handbook on the website of your university. Just keep in mind that all the occupations whose first four digits are the same are called closely related occupations. For example, if you have a skills assessment for 261111, the occupation with an ANZECO code of 261112 is closely related to your occupation. After choosing a nominated occupation for yourself, you must go back to the immigration website to make sure that your nominated occupation is included in the skilled occupation list. Type the occupation and search without selecting any visa options from the drop down. You will see all the visa subclasses that you will be able to apply for after you get the skills assessment for this occupation. If your occupation is not listed there or its status is closed or removed on the skilled occupation list, you will not be able to apply for a visa using your nominated occupation. In that case, you must find another occupation or a closely related occupation for yourself. Click on the Angesco code of the occupation and on the next page you will find all the details including the closely related occupations for this occupation. Finally, if you are considering 491, 190 or any other visa subclasses, Please do not forget to check the skilled occupation list published by the state in which you are applying for because all the states publish a separate occupation list for 190 and 491 visa subclasses. It's now time to start the application for the skills assessment. Go to ACS website and click on migration skills assessment and then click on information for applicants. The information document that are most important are summary of criteria, skills assessment guidelines for applicants, ACS application checklist and Angesco code information. The main document that you need to focus on is the skills assessment guidelines for applicants. In the section 2 of this document, you will find the list of the documents you have to submit while applying for skills assessment. If you are applying for skills assessment based on the degree you acquired in Australia and ACS professional year, you will not need some of these documents. For example, evidence of paid employment, recognition of prior learning and employment references. If you are not using any migration agent to apply for the skills assessment, you will not need this document either. In your resume or CV, it is not necessary to match the job duties with your nominated occupation if you did a professional year after your degree and you are going to apply for the skills assessment based on the professional year. However, if you did not complete the ACS professional year program and instead worked in your nominated occupation for a year, in that case, you will need to match the job duties on the resume with your nominated occupation. You will also need to show the evidence of 
paid employment and employment references. Do not forget to upload the ACS professional year certificates if you have successfully completed it. Go to the ACS website and click on migration skills assessment and then click on online applications. Then click on apply now. If you already have an account on this website, click select and then log in. If you don't have an account on this website, select no and then you will see these options. Okay, so this is the page that you see after logging in as well. Okay, so on this page, you can select for what purpose you are going to get the skills assessment. Okay, uh, in most of the cases, if you studied in Australia, you select this option. If you select this, you will be able to assess your degree based on your uh, work experience or the professional year that you did. Just select the right option for you. Then the next thing to do is to select your nominated occupation. And then hit continue. On this page, you have to provide your personal details and then upload your personal identification documents and provide your contact details and then click on save and continue. On the next page, you will have to upload all the relevant documents and supporting documents and then you can review your uh, application and all the details that you entered on this website and then finally you will be able to make the payment and submit your application. Well, what happens if you forget to upload any important documents? Don't worry too much. ACS teams will first go through all your documents and then ask for the missing documents. They will not reject your application straight away. What happens if my application for skills assessment gets rejected for a chosen occupation? In this case, they will suggest you a suitable occupation for the degree that you have. You will need to pay $200 extra and your skills assessment will be successful for the new occupation that they advised. I'm quite hopeful that my, this video will help you and get your skills assessment without having to go to a migration agent and without having to spend your money. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'll see you in my next video. Good luck.